As the story goes, Sam Golden Rule Jones had quitting meetings for those converted at his revivals. These meetings were to get people to confess their sins, you know, cussing and drinking and gambling and so on, and then have everyone pledge to quit their sinning. At one of these meetings, a lady was asked what she was going to quit. She said she had not been doing anything and was going to quit doing that. Perhaps it is time for us to quit doing nothing. This is a story that comes to mind when I read our passage in Acts. The disciples are hanging out with the resurrected Jesus, still wondering when Israel was going to be restored to greatness. They are gathering strength and faith from the birth of the church, which will happen in a few days on Pentecost. Notice also that this is the first mention of Jesus' mother and brothers as being among the believers. What were the disciples feeling as they looked up at Jesus descending into heaven? Did they wonder what he saw looking down at them, looking up? There he's gone from us. Our leader, our mentor, the power of God among us, gone. Now what? We can write the Gospels, but that's living in the past. We're looking up, but how can we look ahead? What does the future hold for us without our leader? Do we just stand around looking up, waiting to see who will look up with us? To see what it is that has our attention in the sky and not on the ground. This passage has me wonder, what if? What if the disciples had continued to just stand there looking up at the sky? What if they hadn't devoted themselves to prayer or broken bread together? What if they hadn't been open to the Holy Spirit that would descend upon them in just a week's time? What if Peter hadn't emerged as the, as the leader the disciples needed? What if none of them had continued in the teachings and life imagined as inspired by Jesus? What if in the moment after Jesus ascended into the sky, they all just shrugged their shoulders? Hmm, I guess that's it. What if they had all gone back home? back to their life before Jesus, back to fishing or making sandals or making pottery. What if? I don't know that asking what if is always helpful. To do so can be counterproductive. What if I had gotten that job what if I had gone back to school? What if I hadn't married so-and-so? But in this case, in this story, asking what if can remind us of the risk those first disciples took. It reminds us that they didn't just stand around looking up to the sky, wondering what do they do now. What if questions can also spark our imaginations and help us wonder what we can 
do, what we should do, what God is calling us to do. What if I stopped being afraid of failing? What if I called up an old friend that I haven't talked to in a while? What if I let go of resentment and anger about past issues with a loved one? What if I finally had that conversation that I've been putting off? So how does this story inspire 7th Street Christian Church? What if? What if 7th Street saw its building and grounds as vessels for the community? What if 7th Street offered a community refrigerator alongside the pantry for people experiencing food insecurity? What if 7th Street added solar panels to the roof to de decrease our carbon footprint and have us known in the community as striving to protect God's creation? What if 7th Street was open and affirming and our building reflected that? What if 7th Street paid reparations each year as a tithe to black organizations? What if 7th Street opened a pay what you can cafe or helped build affordable housing? What if? Let it be so. Amen.